Thank you. I am truly and profoundly moved by this award, and I am grateful to Penn for selecting me as this year's recipient. My respect for this organization has no borders, and I, uh, among the organizations that help writers, Penn has been so fierce, so consistent, and ferocious in its efforts, it's difficult to ignore their worldwide fame and their impact. Authoritarian reigns, dictators, despots, are often, but not always, fools. But none is foolish enough to give perceptive, dissident writers free range to publish their judgments or to follow their creative instincts. They know they do so at their peril. They're not stupid enough to abandon control, overt or insidious, over media. Their methods include surveillance, censorship, arrest, even slaughter of writers and journalists informing and disturbing the public, of writers unsettling, calling into question, taking another deeper look, writers, journalists, essayists, bloggers, poets, playwrights, these people disturb the social oppression that functions like coma on a population, a coma that the despots call peace. These writers staunch the blood flow of war that hawks and profiteers thrill to, and that is the peril to these regimes. Ours, our peril, is of another sort. Imagine how bleak, unlivable, insufferable existence becomes when we are deprived of that work. That the life and work of writers facing peril must be protected is urgent, but along with that urgency, we should remind ourselves that their absence, the choking off of a writer's work, its cruel amputation, are of equal peril to us. The rescue we extend to them is a generosity to ourselves. We know all the nations that can be identified by the flight of writers from their shores. These are regimes whose fear of unmonitored writing is justified because truth is trouble. It's trouble for the warmonger. It's real trouble for the torturer and the corporate thief, the political hack, the corrupt justice system, and for a comatose public. Unpersecuted, unjailed, unharassed, writers are trouble for that ignorant bully, for that sly racist, and the predators who feed off of the world's resources. The alarm, the disquiet writers raise is instructive because it is open, vulnerable, because if unpoliced, it is threatening. Therefore, the historical suppression of writers is the earliest harbinger of the steady peeling away of subsequent rights and liberties that, are, that will follow. The history of persecuted writers is as long as the history of literature itself. And the efforts to censor, starve, regulate, and annihilate us are clear signs that something important is taking place. Cultural 
and political forces can sweep clean all but the safe, all but state-approved art. I've been told that there are two human responses to the perception of chaos, naming and violence. When the chaos is simply the unknown, the naming can be accomplished effortlessly. A new species, a new star, a new formula, equation, prognosis. There's also mapping, charting, or devising proper nouns of the unnamed or stripped of names, geography, landscape, and population. When chaos resists, either by reforming itself or rebelling against imposed order, violence is understood to be the most frequent response and the most rational when confronting the unknown, the catastrophic, the wild, the wanton, the incorrigible. Rational responses may be censure, incarceration in holding camps, prisons or death, singly or in war. There is, a, however, a third response to chaos, which I have not heard much about, which is stillness. Such stillness can be passivity and dumbfoundedness, or it can be paralytic fear. But it can also be art. And those writers applying their craft near to or far from the throne of raw power, of military power, of empire building and counting houses, writers who construct meaning in the face of chaos, must be nurtured and must be protected. And it is right that such protection be initiated by other writers, and it is imperative not only to save the besieged writers, but to save ourselves. The thought that leads me to contemplate with dread the erasure of other voices, of unwritten novels, poems whispered, swallowed for fear of being overheard by the wrong people, outlawed languages flourishing underground, essayists' questions challenging authority never being posed, unstaged plays, canceled films, that's a nightmare. It's as though a whole universe was being described in invisible ink. Certain kinds of trauma visited on peoples are so deep, so cruel, that unlike money, unlike vengeance, even unlike justice or rights or the goodwill of others, writers can translate such trauma and turn sorrow into meaning, sharpening the moral imagination. A writer's life and work are not a gift to mankind. A writer's life and work are its necessity. Thank you.